Welcome back. Just uh, cubing some gems here. And we'll be getting going. Uh, but first, let's talk about what's changed since last time. As this is going to be a common thread with this mod, it changes a lot. It's not complete. It's not released. So, one of the many things that have changed with this mod is a lot of the armors have been reduced. It's incomplete, but they have been reduced. So, early game armors, oh, because of the change of the formula, I should say, <clears throat> a lot of the early game formulas or early game armors no longer make sense with the formula. And this is an issue uh, kind of overall with the game. So attack rating was cut by 80%. And um, that makes armor really, really strong. Well, strangely enough, I screwed up the formula. And because I screwed up the formula, in the last episode, and probably in the last two episodes, everything was hitting 100%. Well, 95% because that's the cap. So that is why Duriel was killing us so quickly. And that is another reason why I was always hitting. Now, funny enough, there are three places that I had to change the attack rating formula. One is the display for this defense thing. One is the display for this hover on the attack rating. And then the last, of course, is the actual logic step and the logic step was multiplying the wrong number. Now, it's it's assembly, and I apparently just used the wrong register. So instead of multiplying the defense by 5, which is part of the formula to make it so that attack rating is diminished um, as a ratio over armor, the, um, the attack rating itself was actually being multiplied by 5 instead. Whoops. <laughs> Big whoops, really. Um, so uh, everything was always hitting. They were always hitting me. I was always hitting them. And that is not something you would expect. Um, I haven't changed a whole lot with like enemy armor at the moment. So it is uh, kind of reduced from vanilla, but it's not significantly reduced from vanilla. So in the case of, say, the Arcane Sanctuary, which strangely enough, I never clicked the other uh, waypoint there last time. So we've got these guys, and now we hit them 86% of the time. And they hit us 25% of the time, which is a lot more acceptable and a lot more expected. So there's that. The other thing about attack rating to mention since the last time is um, I was dividing it further so that you only got 0.5 attack rating per dexterity. I have changed this to be 1.0. Um, everything else was cut by a divisor of 5. Um, when I, well, I manually did it, but everything went in the um, the tables, the affixes and stuff, and I haven't fixed stuff like this. So I have fixed stuff like this. Oh, hey, I forgot that I fixed that apparently. Um, so this is normally like 50 attack rating or something, or 25 attack rating. It's now 10. Um, so things like 25% negative target defense might need adjustment. And that is not supposed to be 30 mana over 10 seconds by any means. It should probably be like three. So not everything's perfect. And that defense probably should be something like five or 10, eight, maybe just cut it in half. Uh, this has been adjusted to run. Uh, so it does give two mana per kill on weapons. It doesn't give it on anything else. It's been reduced to one. And so we're going to be adjusting a lot of that kind of stuff uh, in, in the near future. Because stuff like this, this plus two mana per kill on this ring, makes my immolation arrow absolutely absurd. Let's see, what's my dude wearing here? We're still wearing this. He does a lot of damage with it, but... I'd like to put something like this back on him. And 
and he can't wear this anymore, which is kind of part of the problem, but... Let's see. So we used this to help kill Duriel. Um, it didn't really do the damage that is that is listed. I mean, it did do the damage listed here, but Duriel's not going to really care. Um, what it did was allow us to die like 15 or something times and pick up our body and just get this immolation arrow on him. Uh, immolation arrow has been reduced in size back to its original. Uh, this this hover is incorrect. It is actually four seconds in the mod. Uh, I don't always adjust the uh, UI when I adjust things. So that is just what it is there. Uh, not enough space for anything. I will probably eventually do what a lot of mods have done, which is I will most likely make it so that gems are stackable. Um, we'll see. I'm not a huge fan of the idea, uh, but for the sake of just clutter, it might be useful. And rings with this modifier, the plus two mana per kill. Plus two mana per kill is hard to balance, so I may be removing plus two uh, to kill entirely from rings and, and stuff like that. It might just be a modifier that is more found on uniques and, uh, and turun and stuff like that. So like, you'd have to sacrifice something to put it on your weapon. Um... And even then, I don't know. Big thing is, is that AoE attacks naturally are just better than everything else, which means that they kill everything. So even if you upscale the mana cost, which is the intent partially on this, then if you can kill 10 enemies or even 5 enemies, uh, you're getting half the mana cost back. And my goal with skills, as mentioned before, is that each... Stop running away. I'm back here. There we go. Is that each each uh, skill is intended to have slightly different purposes. It's not meant to just be an upgrade. So we get, like, Exploding Arrow in here, and we kill a bunch of small dudes. But we also get, like, a bunch of bonus damage. These dudes must have really good armor. I also just do no damage. Heavy crossbow. Okay, we'll have to look at it. We'll see how heavy it truly is. He's right there. How did I not hit him? Come on. Come back here. Ooh, full axe. Can you use it? Yes, you can. Perfect. Now you actually do damage. Heavy crossbow of enhanced damage and alacrity. That is actually amazing. Let's see what it actually does here. It just teleported like 10 feet. Thank you. Thank you, Deckard Kane. You told me something really amazing about basically talking to someone in town. Thanks. That's the, that's the wrong person. And, and we'll buy some, some bolts and test out this weapon, because that is a massive ton of damage. The golden bird. Okay, you told me something else. Now let's go give it to somebody else. Because this is how quests and video games work.
And then we get permit 20 life. There we go. One of the best quests in the entire game because it's just good life. There's another one for like five stat points. Another one for 10, 10 max, uh, or not max, but uh. You sell crossbows, but you do not have arrows. That is uh You know what? 35%, I'll take it. Uh, mostly I just want the bigger belt. Uh, this is something else I'm planning on changing. I am, I'm looking to make belt always give maybe not all four, but probably like three of the slots like straight up, uh, straight away. Because it's just not a mechanic I care for, like at all. Anything resist. We got 67. That's 84. Sure. Let's do that. What's my strength at? I could almost wear splint mail. Faster hit recovery. Oh boy, that is expensive. Seven life regen over 10 seconds. That doesn't seem amazing, but... I'm trying to think what I can put on my dude here. Faster hit recovery. And that. Those are both faster hit recovery. Let's see if he can wear either of these. No, not both of them. But he can wear the one. That's 92 defense. Required level four. Interesting. How does that make sense? Well, I can't wear it, but I could literally wear it next level. So maybe I'll just keep that. Okay, let's go find the shop that no one ever goes to. Down here at the forge. Oh, Nat's here. Hey, Natalia. Greetings, hero. I've heard of your exploits, and uh, I'm quite impressed. Very few mortals are capable of dealing with the three, and anyway, so I'm sure it's probably pretty well known, but Natalia is the uh, what's the right word? She's got the ultimate set pieces for the assassin. And she just kind of shows up there. So if we switch between two different weapons here, we are doing twice as much damage on this thing than that thing, at least. Let's see here. Yeah, twice as much damage. Although I feel like it should be more than twice as much, because that's a, a lot of damage. Let me check on something real quick. Uh, let's see here. Heavy crossbow. Is that what this is? Yeah, it's a heavy crossbow, right? Okay. Heavy crossbow. 14 to 26. We've got bonus damage on it. Ah, yes. I have not uh, changed that yet. Okay. So one of the things I thought I changed but have not is that all, all ranged weapons will have some form of dexterity built into them for their stats. In the base game, things like throwing weapons like javelins had a, uh, like, 75% kind of a quality style in my eye. They put a blow dart in my eye. 
Uh, kind of a quality type thing. The idea being that you might want more uh, strength if you're using a javelin or a spear. Uh, but I wanted to simplify it. I did do some stuff. So like crossbows at the moment, they're 70-70 uh, strength and dexterity. Um, from what I understand, like historically, a lot of crossbows were kind of uh, almost demonized, uh, insulted more so, uh, just because they're easy to use and they're cheap to make comparative to training like a whole... Um, group of archers and just kind of anybody could use them and uh and that was just a frustration i guess in certain times of of warfare which i i just kind of find that historical aspect interesting anyways um because of this uh this translates in game mechanics in some games to things like crossbows not scaling very well with dexterity or another stat in which um, maybe Dark Souls or something like that. I think it's Dark Souls um, where their crossbows just don't scale like either at all or very well or something like that. And that's part of like the reason, I think. I think that's their logic behind it is because you don't need a lot of skill with a crossbow that you would normally uh, need for... I think I want to go down to the Spider Cavern. That you'd normally need to uh, to have with a bow. So in that case, uh, I made them seventy seventy, and I'm I'm probably just going to remove that. And I'll just be treating crossbows as probably more of just like a heavy bow. Uh, so thematically, it it'll, it'll be a little less like you know, historically accurate or whatever. Um, but thematically, it'll be just, this is a heavier bow, which is probably what it should have been. Blizzard made crossbows quite heavy, which meant no one really wanted to use them. Um, the, they are reduced in weight in my, my mod. This mercenary is doing work. He's doing 100 damage a hit. Um... You're just going to walk around with no weapon. That's how I'm, I'm going to play that. Because that's... Uh, that's really weird that I got minimum damage on two different things twice there. That would have been an amazing skill... Uh, skill amulet, though. So yeah, uh, this crossbow, it has lower uh, dexterity... Uh, crossbows also have uh, shorter range in the mod. Uh, this only translates currently on things like this, regular arrow shot, as well as things like uh, multi-strike. Uh, but in the future, I, I have a plan. I've been told potentially how to make that work with things like fire arrow and whatnot. So you won't be able to use a crossbow at like crazy ranges. Um... I believe right now they're at like 25 and then regular arrows are at like 30. I just don't want to abuse the uh, mercenary by the way. Uh, that's why I took off his uh his weapon. He's doing a lot of damage, and I want to be as fair as possible. And I'm not sure if this is doing the damage that it actually states or not, because I've changed things. So it says it's doing like 100 damage a second. It could be doing like a half or a third of what it's actually saying. Uh, but I did reduce its radius from... Um, I had it at 5. It's back down to 3. And those are medium flames, by the way. It was at large flames. These are medium flames. Or at least they're supposed to be. Okay, what's their chance of hitting me? 25%. Okay. 
So we've gone two different extremes now. I've been working on the armor thing. Make sure our mercenary doesn't just instantly die, too. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Um, so further continuing about the crossbow thing. Uh, crossbows do... I'm not trying to pick these things up. There we go. Crossbows do have increased attack speed in my mod. Um... One of the things that I had temporarily and I may re-implement is that uh, some of the crossbows are meant to be like more heavy. And so I may re-implement that certain items have not hidden, um, but explicit uh, movement speed penalties. So in the base game, a lot of stuff, uh, certain shields and, and our chest pieces had uh, movement penalties. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of them implicitly. And I know Path of Exile has them too, um, because there's a skill on the tree that actually removes that penalty. I just don't even care. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to probably re-implement that in more of an explicit format. So... The idea that I have with a lot of weapons is that while a great weapon, like a two-handed weapon, it's slower, sure, um, but maybe it's not as slow as uh, we would otherwise think. Um, and this might be leaning all sorts of different directions for game design here. Uh, so I've worked on Salt Sanctuary as both a mod and as a part-time maintenance developer. I was able to rebalance that game um, with the enhanced mode. And and I think most people like the enhanced mode. I I think most people do. Uh, there's, there's a few people that don't, and uh, usually they're pretty polite about it uh, because classic mode still exists. But anyways... Um, point is that in a lot of games you get a two-handed weapon and it attacks ultra ultra slow and outside of very specific situations in Diablo 1 and Diablo 2 two-handed weapons kind of suck uh back in the day like whirlwind was used with two-handed weapons, and it was probably one of the few situations where two-handed weapons were just good. And outside of that, not so much. And I, I think I think two-handed weapons are a fun thing uh, in, in gaming because it, 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 it serves a power fantasy, right? It's not just, you know, big bad weapon. It's that these are kind of unrealistically large weapons a lot of the time. And in the case of like Salt Sanctuary or even Dark Souls, they're unrealistically heavy as well. So they're they're massive, they're heavy, they have often very long range. That kind of stuff. And but I, I, I have the opinion that they don't necessarily need to be slower attacking. Not always, and not in every situation. Um, like in, potentially inconsistently, more, more in the context of more on a weapon by weapon basis, maybe. So in Salt Sanctuary, for example, um, you have hammers. They're really good. They do strike damage, and strike damage is outside of certain bosses really good. And that prayer sound is actually really getting on my nerves. As weird as of. All the other sounds in the game. That's the that's the one that's for whatever reason getting on my nerves. Uh, so I don't just 
jump into the uh, the pattern personally that all heavy weapons should be slow. I think they should be powerful, but I think that they should potentially also have other detriments. In in Dark Souls or Salt Sanctuary, you have endurance, uh, so you might have a strength requirement in Dark Souls. You don't have strength requirements in in Salt Sanctuary. You do have class skill requirements, so you have to level up a specific skill on the tree. But those those class nodes are they're just another stat node by by another name. You just have to traverse the tree to get to them, and you have to learn them in order and stuff like that. Um, but one of the things I think of in, say, like, Salt Sanctuary is they're heavy, but that's also one of their benefits, if that makes any sense. They're heavy, and that's a an issue for your character to solve. But just because they're heavy doesn't mean that they should be ultra-epic slow. And so in Salt Sanctuary, just as the basis of my example here, uh, I am most versed in Salt and Sanctuary uh, and Dark Souls 1 in, the, in, in that kind of series. And in the base game, great weapons were a little bit overpowered. And by a little bit, I mean like they were triple S tier overpowered. And they're still probably S tier or double S tier overpowered, uh, but they're not... They're not as overpowered. I nerfed them a little bit in the enhanced mode, but... Instead of just simply saying, these are slower, I think it's also good to have other other aspects to them. And so in those games, they're not, they're not stat-oriented items, right? So if we were to grab this like uh, as our own weapon or this crossbow, we lose this extra slot, this, this side slot here. And so it's not just trading a shield. It's trading all the affixes that could have been on that offhand weapon, whether it be dual wielding or, or shield wielding. We lose all of the effects that would normally be there. Um, but that's not true in, say, Dark Souls. Sanctuary. So in that case, I balanced the great swords as being basically um, they're more poise, uh, stagger damage, they uh, by default. And I didn't make the base game, so I'm just using kind of some of the base numbers to adjust things. Uh, so in 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 the basic aspect, they're they're more poise damage. They have longer reach, and they do more damage. But instead of just doing more damage, I made them just kind of bank a little bit more on their longer reach. Wow, that hurts, and I actually appreciate that. Please don't kill him. I kind of like him. I accidentally hit control. There we go. What are you What are you wearing? This is a poleaxe. That's a poleaxe. I, I want to see what that poleaxe looks like. I have to actually open my inventory first. A three socket pole axe. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll just give it to you because you know I'm going to put something in those sockets. So, in the current version of Enhanced Mode, the co so to say rebalance of uh, Salt and Sanctuary. The swords, the great swords, have been kind of pseudo rebalanced to be 50% more damage, 50% more range, and 50% uh, more poise. Now, previously they were something like, due to some other issues, um, they were closer to 100% more damage. Uh, not entirely, but but somewhat. And so with some adjustments to one-handed weapons to actually be kind of semi-good, um, the, the one-handers got better. And with some adjustments to the two-handers, the two-handers got better. So while the two-handers are 
Uh, I'm trying to remember the actual like math on the animations. It's all animation driven uh, for the attack speeds and stuff. Um, I believe the two handers are something like 30% fast slower, 25-30% slower. It, it's not all. It's it's a lot, but it, it you're not going to feel it because uh, there's no release of the damage in uh, Salt and Sanctuary, so to say. It's uh, it's a curve. It goes through the entire swing. So if something's standing right next to you and you start the swing, they instantly get hit. I don't think that's true in Dark Souls. I think there is a release or a hitbox that is delayed in Dark Souls. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm probably misremembering something somewhere. Whew, that is some fire damage. I did not buff those guys at all, by the way. Like, they do that much damage normally. I need to be in the Flayer Dungeon. But I feel like I've just never done Act 3 enough to remember where anything is, ever. There we go. Ooh, a great helm. Two sockets? Amulet. Just getting all sorts of stuff here. Maximum damage and resist all eight. I need to change that to be like resist all eight percent. I don't know why it's eight. I would really like an Amazon amulet, but at least they're starting to drop. Anyway. I ramble. That's my thing. And this is a long game, sort of, to make rambling useful a little bit. Um, so my crossbows are faster attacking. They are lower strength requirement, and uh, and they follow that kind of pattern uh, from from my previous modding experience in Salt Sanctuary, and. I will probably adjust this further. Don't get me wrong. But in Diablo, strength is not just strength. Strength is also kind of your endurance stat. So strength gives you damage on your weapons, of certain weapons, but it also gives you the ability to wear armor. And unlike endurance, it's not diminishing, as in it's not consumed. So in Dark Souls or Salt and Sanctuary, when you're wearing a big heavy item, it makes you walk slower and roll worse, right? In Diablo, this isn't based on your strength at all. This is just based on the item. So a heavier shield or a heavier torso uh, armor will just make you walk faster. And I've removed that in this game mode, uh, this mod. Where am I supposed to go? Northwest? Go northwest. So, the mod still always has a lot of work left to it. It will always probably have a lot of work left to it. It is not in a 1.0 state. Um, these playthroughs are, in essence, me just playtesting the changes and then trying to change little things at a time. Um, the problem is I often do not actually finish everything. So I might finish all the helmets doing something or all the armors doing something and then 
move on. Uh, so I have, I believe, I have finished all the gems in, in recent uh, updates where I don't have any on me, but so gems now have, well, damage in general now has a, a different uh, stat value overall. So one, uh, red and blue gems here give mana and health, but, um, and this is a flawed, so they're not equivalent here. But all fire damage, mostly, as a basis, as a baseline. All fire damage in my mod now follows a, a kind of formula where uh, there's there's kind of a, a goal for damage. And then... You know what, we might actually be able to get some mana stolen now because... So we actually do physical damage for once. I am uh, so, yeah. Uh, don't die, please. Let's just do that. Let's give you one as well. Let's drink that because I don't need it. I just want these mana potions. Probably that's it. So fire damage now maintains a 75% ratio or a 3 to 4 ratio of minimum damage to maximum damage. And then for balance purposes... Um... This is sort of true and sort of false, the next thing I'm about to say. In Diablo 1, Lightning didn't have the variance that Diablo 2 does. Um, so in Diablo 1, you had stuff like Charge Bolt, which did like one damage minimum, and the minimum never scaled. And then in Diablo 2, you have stuff like Charge Bolt, and the minimum never scales. But both versions of that ability you get a lot of charge bolts, which means that you do kind of have this minimum uh, damage being scaled up, because at least in Diablo 2... Ow! Ow. That was unexpected. We're going to have to walk all the way back here. At least in Diablo 2 Charge Bolt, you, going back to that, you have a lot of hits. And so in vanilla, you can get up to 24 hits. I called it Charge Carpet. Um, if you've ever like rubbed your feet against a carpet and gotten a shock, it kind of feels like that. You know, it's just, you can't walk anywhere and not get shocked, so to say. And it wasn't like a super popular or very strong build, but you could definitely ramp up your charge bolt into a legitimate threat in, uh, in vanilla Diablo 2. And part of the reason for this is, is because the minimum damage does scale on lightning percent damage, which the sorceress gets from her mastery. And then it also scales, sort of, by having multiple hits in it. I want to go this way. And so when you have 24 bolts and each bolt is doing, I don't know, 3 to 400, um, if you even hit like a few of those... I can't carry oh boy. I uh, picked something up, I guess. All run. No, 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 no. 
Okay, that might be a little high, the damage on that. I don't know. Fire resist of 19. I am overburdened. Burdened? What are you overburdened with? I can't use this yet. But I was using it. I can't use this yet. Okay. I can't carry anymore. I can't use this yet. What changed? I don't know what changed. I lost strength somewhere. I don't... I'm confused. You know what happened, tell me, because I, I don't know what happened there. I thought I had like 44 strength. Uh, continuing on damage types. Um, so since since stuff can miss in my mod when it used to not be able to like uh, spells and stuff, um, I am adjusting the ratios of a lot of general stuff. These guys are too fast. Don't walk in my melee range of me. Uh, so lightning is a 1 to 6 ratio now. So you'll find early items will give you something like 1 to 6 lightning damage. Um, later game items, instead of giving you something like 1 to 12 or 1 to 14, they'll now be 2 to 12 or 2 to 14. Um, this is definitely a breakaway from, from the base game. You still have this really low... Holy cow. That is a lot of dudes. That was a lot of dudes. And they're fast, so they don't stay in the fire. Oh boy. Wow, I didn't hit anything is the problem there. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so lightning damage is being kind of changed to, to 2 to 6. Or, or 1 to 6, excuse me. Uh, so 2 to 12 and 2 to 14 and stuff like that will be seen on a lot of the uh, gems and whatnot. Man, do not miss that. It's so expensive to miss that. These guys are hard to, uh, to hit. Right through the middle of them. They just move all the time. Uh, cold has the uh, most narrow damage. Yeah, that shouldn't be so instant huge damage. That I, I don't like instant huge damage. Ooh, a chest. Light plated boots. These are chain boots, so let's see what we got here. 31 armor. Probably higher than it should be, but... I don't remember what these do. 25% magic find. Oh, that's a lot of... There's a lot of magic or er, elemental resist on that. I probably want that. Okay, 
Let's get some skills in here. I would like to have a higher chance to pierce. Don't know which way I'm going. Um, so cold damage is now a 80% ratio. Something like that, where fire damage is a 75% uh, ratio or, or so. Or maybe it's 60%. Maybe I did 60%. I think it's a 12 to 20. That's probably 60%, right? Am I just not hitting you, or was there a glitch there? What was what was that going on? 73% chance. I missed you four times. Uh, poison is a set amount of time now, uh, at least poison gems. A lot of poison skills will also be uh, adjusted set amounts of time so that they don't scale uh, by duration anymore. Yeah, I think I'm going to do something. Okay, so in the future, I think I'm going to make Exploding Arrow uh, kind of powerful uh, and... In, in just kind of this like exploding, uh, you know, maybe four, make it four radius instead of three. Um, even five might be might be pretty good. Uh, but the goal is that this would be kind of more your AOE. This is more just damage per second. This is more of a firewall arrow. So we might want to make it so that the immolation arrow is. It's already three radius. I think that's fine. Two radius is too small. You won't you won't barely even notice two radius uh, due to how uh, due to how radius works in Diablo two. Uh, Diablo two under the hood is still grid based. So yeah, I bet that's I bet that explosion is three. So if we if we made exploding arrow something more like four. We would... Oh my gosh, don't touch me. Actually, let's put up a safety portal. That would be really good to have, probably. But yeah, I want Exploding Arrow to be this like big burst damage. And I want... Um, I want I want immolation arrow to be more of this DPS oriented play. Uh, so you fire the immolation arrow, you kind of walk around, kind of like like I said, like firewall. It's not just this deals a crazy ton of damage over two seconds, but this deals you know moderate damage over over a few uh, like four seconds, which is what it's set to right now. And I would really have to test what its actual damage is doing. Come back here. I would like to make Exploding Arrow. That's another thing I could probably do. I could also make Exploding Arrow a shorter ranged arrow. So it doesn't travel like across the screen. Like if I shoot this arrow, it's going to go out of the screen. Because uh, the screen is about 30 uh, radius. Just about. I shoot it towards the end, you know, up there. The hitbox on that is uh, apparently delayed, which is uh, why it's so scary. It just like suddenly hits you because you're like, oh, I'm safe. And then you just take a billion damage. I like that I'm not hitting every time. Like I haven't just broken the uh, attack rating formula completely. Mana. 
Uh, he does. He doesn't have a chance to hit me though. He probably should. Those guys should probably have a pretty high chance to hit you. They are like really big. These guys are probably resistant to fire. Go figure. But yeah, maybe... I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here. And wandering and trying to find where I'm going here. But yeah, uh, I'm thinking like Exploding Arrow could have a reduced range uh, generally. Maybe. So that you could kind of aim it about, I don't know, about here. You know, something, what is that? Probably around, so this would probably be 8 range. So that would probably be about 15 to 20, something like that. Some, that's probably 8 right there. That's probably 16, 24. So yeah, what if it maybe had only like 16 range on the on the projectile itself? And then you could shoot at the ground. Um, just always explode. Diablo 3 has the loaded for the bear cluster rocket arrow thing. And that has... Diablo 3 is not my favorite Diablo, but it, it has its own merits and, and fun to it. And that is that is one of the funnest abilities, in my opinion. For, for me and for how I play and stuff, I think that's just, you know, big bomb on a bow. It's just, it's just fun. It's like basically having an exploding shotgun as a, as a, as a, as a bow uh, attack. And so that's kind of what I'm looking to mimic. So maybe if I could just have it always explode at like 15, uh, they call it meters. It's really not meters, but whatever. And that's one of the big balance changes of this game. Uh, this mod is... Oh my goodness, I cannot hit this dude. So this would be a situation where if I wanted to hit him, I could shoot it at the ground and have it, you know, hit him. Because uh, he's moving all over the place and I want to I wanna just annihilate him, but I can't. Do not breathe fire. On me. Ugh. No, no. I would probably also extend his fire breath to be longer ranged, but I don't know if that would actually affect his AI or not. What do we get? What do we get? Ten to strength. Uh, ten to strength would give us a lot of capacity to wear gear. If it was more than ten to strength, I would almost immediately wear it. I would hate to make Exploding arrow not be able to pierce, but uh, balance wise, I mean, uh, th th thematically, I should say, not balance wise. Balance wise, it's fine for it to pierce. Thematically, it might be interesting to kind of make it not pierce. I probably wouldn't do that for the mod, but it makes sense in something like Loaded for the Bear in Diablo 3, where. Or you'd probably want something like more of like an instant explosion. Um, if it always can pierce. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, the the Amazon was designed this way to uh, to do stuff. Like, I, I don't want to take that away from the mod. The mod isn't meant to be making my own Diablo 
entirely. It's meant to be kind of just like cleaning up some mechanics and experimenting with some different designs. Um, but I, I really like that ability, and it would make sense for a different game, nonetheless, like Diablo 3. Uh, it would make sense for another game to have um, non-piercing projectiles even within the synergy that would be expected of a game like this. Mind that I really appreciate Diablo 2's mechanics uh, more so than a lot of other games because of what they they allow you to do. Um, man, what is my hit rating on those guys? 75%. Great, not bad, but not great. Oh, and the explosion does uh, carry full physical damage on your weapon now. So one of the other things I may I've talked about before. Not enough mana. That actually staggers me too. I mean, you probably would get staggered if you were like having fire breath in your face, but. I want to control stagger a little bit differently uh, eventually here, but it's not a, an easy goal to do. Did I kill him? Okay. Ooh, it pierced. I... There. But yeah, one of the things I wanted to do or have debated on doing as well with Exploding Arrow is giving it more source damage. Uh, so in Diablo 2, you can give a an ability. Hey, we, we finally made it to the next area. I think this is where we're supposed to be. Damage reduced by two. Only physical damage, though. Got magic damage reduced by four. Even more reason why that fire damage is doing way too much damage. It's being reduced by four. That's per second, by the way. Oh, come on. But uh, source damage. It would be interesting, in my opinion, to give some abilities higher source damage. Blizzard gave it lower source damage on a few abilities. I've put it on, say, multi-shot and guided arrow and strafe so that they're consistent across the board. They all have three-fourth weapon damage. Uh, this reduces elemental damage as well. As far as I'm aware, it reduces all damage on the weapon. So uh, this means that like poison charms, which don't exist in the mod, um, but other other aspects of like charms or, or whatnot are reduced as well. Move my microphone a little bit. But uh, I've I've been able to change exploding arrow to carry the whole damage of your weapon with the explosion. Uh, so this means that if you have an ice bow, you can actually mix the ice with the fire. What did what just dropped? Flawed amethyst. Which is absolutely broken, but also cool, right? Uh, cold damage is going to be nerfed, though. Not not cold damage, but um, I'd like to nerf the amount of slow on both player and enemy alike. Enemies have a column for this. Players, it's hard-coded, apparently, to like 50% slow. 
Paper percent slow is just insane. Like 30% slow, I could see that. 25% slow, maybe. But 30% but slow, I think, is a lot more fair, or 25% or something like that. I don't know where that's at yet. I'd have to figure it out. Go see if it's uh, been documented in any way. Lime prints. But uh, having having the exploding arrow be increased weapon damage instead of decreased weapon damage, like uh, multi shot, I think that could be really cool. So mechanics explanation, since this is, uh, you know, I'm a focus on mechanics a lot of my videos here. Um, game mechanics here in Diablo 2 is that when you get percentage bonus damage, where's a uh, percentage bonus damage here on a weapon, this is only applied to your physical damage. It is not applied to your magical or elemental damage on your weapon. Hey, the poison isn't strong enough to hurt me. Oh, okay. Now it is. Uh, but source damage is different, because it takes the source of your weapon and then changes it. Uh, in Diablo 2, it does not account for things like fear on hit, or, or things like that that don't scale with physical damage. Chance to cast on hit, things like that. Uh, naturally, it does affect things like uh, life steal and mana steal because you're reducing damage. But I can't carry anymore. Can't carry it. We'll, we'll do that. Getting a lot of amulets. I, I don't know what the what the deal is on that. Let's just get rid of some of this junk. Okay, that's probably okay. The rest of it can just be sold. I'll be honest, I don't care about this either. Half freeze duration? I'm not going to wear it as a ring. If that was a belt, maybe. You can sell with control click, but you cannot put things in your stash with control click. I don't know why I saved that. Go resurrect this dude. There. We'll sell that, we'll sell that. Come back, my hireling. What do you need? I can't use that. Why not? The faster hit recovery on this helmet is absolutely amazing. Don't need that either. 24% faster hit recovery has to hit at least one breakpoint. Probably two. Which means that well, maybe I'll wear the other helmet, though. 
Put that there. I'm just going to wear that for more defense. But, um, going back to what I was saying, the Diablo 2 engine is just really powerful, um, but it also has some, some things that are very limited at the same time. So you can't limit a uh, chance to cast and, and things like that, but you can limit uh, elemental damage being passed to a weapon. So the default uh, exploding arrow actually only passes the source damage of the fire uh, from your weapon. So you can, you can find a fire weapon... Fire arrow type uh, type weapon, and uh, and it will pass to the to the damage. I need mana. Oh, there we go. Something I completely forgot. In a previous patch, I made it so that uh, each player is has an innate mana regen. This was a code edit. Um, as well as an innate uh, health regen. A flat value. Nice. Oh. The, the dude is also enchanted there. Oh, wow, that's, uh, compare that. I don't know. Hit monsters, it causes monsters to flee seems really good and seven max damage and eight attack rating. I know eight attack rating doesn't sound like I'm a lot when you're used to, like, 50 bonus attack rating. Dang. That was just a massive roll. 72%. Another mana potion in there. I want that. There's another mana potion over here. Um, but I actually made going to health regen mana regen. Uh, I actually made it so that it's not just five flat. I want the exploding arrow. Where is it? There we go. It's actually been changed in, um, I guess, yesterday, two days ago. Oh, I changed it on Wednesday, broke the game, couldn't, uh, unless I reverted the change, I couldn't stream or record, I mean. And uh, so I just decided to, to wait uh, for the next episode. Um, so it is Friday the 13th. Hopefully this will go up today. I always do a, a general audio pass and some other stuff on stuff. Naturally. I don't do a whole lot of editing. But uh, I do some editing. Just try to keep track if I pause the game, walk away, stuff like that. Sneeze, you know, whatever. Making stuff run away is actually really funny. So anyways, broke the game. Fix the game. And now you regenerate 1% of your maximum health per second, by default. Took a lot of jumping in the code to do this. And, uh... But it, but it, it works. It was overhealing for a little while, once I, I, I got the game to stop crashing. But uh, it was overhealing. So uh, you wouldn't take damage because you couldn't see your your health pool. It was it was that overhealing. It was it was an absolute mess. But got it working. 
Got it working. Took a little bit, but I got it working. I need a key. That is not where I want to go. I don't want I don't want the shadowy pit. Sounds like a terrible place to go. Personally, I, I think I would avoid shadowy pits. I need mana. Uh, the attack speed difference uh, on this bow. So all short bows uh, and like the hunter's bow and stuff like that, uh, they are standardized to be uh, like negative 10. Uh, long bows are just like zero or something. I think originally they're they're positive 10. Uh, positive 10 means they're slower. And then crossbows are all negative 10 to bring them closer to like a longbow. Uh, but it just it constrains the amount of difference of slow between all of the different uh, different weapons. And I'll be doing that across the board. And that's going to be to the dismay of a lot of people, I'm sure. Uh, Y'all probably enjoy the nuance between different weapons. I... I see it as more of a, do I want this two-hander or that two-hander? More so than, do I want this hammer versus this axe? Uh, it has to do with uh, under uh, opinions on pool dilution and stuff like that. I, I'm not giving hammers special treatment uh, to, to what can spawn on them versus, um, versus like a two-handed sword. See what this ring mail has. One of strength. You wearing something that's got yeah, 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 you are. Let's uh actually I'll probably want to uh Can you wear this? Can you wear this? Oh, you need one strength. You need one strength. Okay. Um, put some points into Vitality. This is the wrong way. Put up the town portal there. Found a waypoint, didn't find the dungeon. That is a very different amount of damage. Pole axe versus the bolsh. I can't carry anymore. Don't. I am overburdened. I cannot click one button at a time, apparently. Ethereal, huh? Yeah, let's let's give it that to him. I think the other one had sockets. Which way do we want to go? I guess northwest again, or west mostly. Oh, uh, but yeah, uh, the idea would be that weapons and armors don't have significant uniqueness. You're choosing just an armor more so than an armor that is also XYZ. Um, I know Path of Exile has the XYZ. Uh, I know a lot of players like that. Uh, I, I do feel that it ends up with pool dilution, which then leads to requiring things like a, a loot filter. Where is this? Where am I going? Get more pierce here. That doesn't seem like a lot, though. I need mana. Put 
The Flare Dungeon. Oh, the Gibden. Okay. Oh, jeez. They're everywhere. Well, that's a quest. Like, grunting and running at me. It's, it's terrifying. It's gotta be over here somewhere, right? Flare Dungeon, we did it. Yeah, let's do the Flare Dungeon and then probably take a break again. Go with more like a fire arrow here. Not enough mana because they're draining it. I need mana. Level two. Make it progress. I don't know what the deal is with dropping amulets. It must be something in the drop pool on uh, Act 3, or just these little dudes have a really high chance to drop jewelry or something. I'm, I'm not really sure. Getting so much... So much stuff. Oh boy. I'm stuck. Okay. Not enough mana. I'm actually out of healing potions. I stopped picking them up. pieces of junk in my inventory here. Oh crap, I didn't want to do that. That's eh, whatever. Oh yeah, that's something else I want to do. Uh, I want to make things like this socketed here. Uh, the mechanics, or jewelers, or whatever uh, effect. I'd like to make that less popular. Or not less popular, less common. Popular. Um, break out into song. Um, on rares. I think rares and uniques having sockets breaks aspects of the balance of the game. And so I think the idea being that you could use your quest to get one socket, and therefore sockets on an item should either be something really special, such as magical items always having like full socket availability, 
Um, some of that might require code edits. I'm not sure. Um, the affix selection won't require code edits, but the quest might. I'm not sure what the quest allows. Pretty sure the quest gives max sockets, so it's probably just able to give like rares, like two sockets, in many cases, and uh, and I'm not I'm not a big fan of that. Um, like many of my rambles, this is a very big side tangent. I see sockets as a secondary crafting system in Diablo 2 that allows you to build what you need to build without being reliant on finding as much of the perfect stuff. You can see my health just regenerating between his his healing and my healing. If we're uh we're not like in direct combat, we're healing quite quickly. He's just on the edge of that fire. I like rune words too. Um, I think a lot of rune words are very overpowered. Even some of the original rune words. Uh, I, I, I want to say steel and leaf. Um, I don't remember what the some of the other ones were. But even even early Lord of the Lord of Destruction rune words were pretty strong, and then the uh, the patch ten versions were, uh, you know, just plain insanity. So I don't know what I don't know what was going on there. Another short battle bow. I don't have the strength for any of these. Is he leveled up yet? I need him to level up. Kalim's brain. Now oh, we already wasted our teleport at the beginning of this dungeon, so. This is... I'll put that there. I'll really put that in there, but. Oh, what would we get for uh, amulets and stuff? What'd he give me? Magic damage reduced by four. That's so good. I'd have eight magic damage reduction. Sell that, sell that, sell that, sell that, sell that. Question mark this. I feel like I don't need the mana regeneration as much. So here's an example of some, some of the math. So I'm the the run is almost over. Uh, I'm I'm not going to do any more questing. Um, so stay a while if you want. Otherwise, feel free to walk away. I'm just kind of doing cleanup here. So, but this is an example of how kind of uh, Diablo one felt for me, where you could find a a lower level piece of gear here. So 44 strength, the lower level. It says required level 17 because of the stat on it. The glorious stat. But it's a 72% roll. It's an amazing roll. But then, if you have just a little bit more strength, four more strength at this point, uh, th this might be changed later, but we'll see uh, what, what I'm doing there. It's kind of a work in progress for some of these armors. Uh, but you get this four more strength, and suddenly you have a much stronger uh, piece of gear. And
That is definitely not respecting my durability changes. I mean, look at that. Supposed to be 44 strength. And it's supposed to be like 16 durability. Yeah, it's it's not respecting that. So it means it means I need to reset my uh, my file system. The binaries aren't linking when when I do a boot up boot up in the game. Anyways, it's it's an easy fix. I just delete a file and it should reset the armors. But anyways, um their durability is just way too high and their armor is technically probably too high as well uh for for the new changes. So the armor changes didn't make it in. Uh, for for any of the the items found this run, but uh, you've got this this item here. It's got a high strength requirement. It's pretty good. Uh, it has an amazing stat bonus here. But you find another item that requires a little more strength, and it happened to get the same stat bonus, just a different value. And and twenty percent here is still really good. Uh, so this twenty percent versus that seventy two percent. Yeah, you can save the four strength. But every item that costs a little more strength is always going to be better than something that costs less uh, at the same at the same level, especially. Um, so one of the things that I'm changing is, and it's it's been a planned thing since like a year and a half ago. It just came back to the mod like a month and a half ago uh, to kind of stream it and and tinker with it. But one of the things is is that there is. And I might I might share some of this later on, but there is a progression tree now uh, that I'm I'm working to build, where uh, there are five light armors, five medium armors, and five heavy armors uh, per difficulty level, and then they just kind of sort of repeat in a similar uh, order, uh, levels and order and stuff. They might be squished a little bit as you as you reach the higher levels but they just kind of repeat so for light armors you have like quilted leather hard leather breastplate and so hard leather comes into play around like level 10 level 9 uh, these are adjusted numbers they're not vanilla and the breastplate doesn't come into play until level 18 i believe that's actually unchanged for level so the light armor user if they don't want to put any any strength in, they're going to be waiting like nine, ten levels before they find an upgrade uh, for, for their gear, uh, for their chest piece in this context. Uh, then they're going to wait another nine or so levels, ten levels for the light plate, and which, which is at like level 30. So level nine, level 18, level 30 you're going to be waiting a lot to kind of get those upgrades. Um, but these are meant to be lower strength requirement items. Their defense, however, is also going to be reflected in their lower strength. So in the base game, the breastplate is uh, a massive increase to any of the armors, whereas in, in, in this mod, the breastplate will actually be less armor than some of the other armors that came before it because it requires less strength. So there will be... Um, there'll be some math involved. They'll figure out like a personal formula for this. Um, it'll be related to things like the level requirement. It'll be related to the, like the strength requirement, and it'll be related to the um, the class of armor. So armors don't have slow in them anymore in the mod. Uh, neither do shields. Uh, if they do get it, it will end up being a an auto magic or an explicit modifier it will not be hidden uh, so it'll be something that you can choose something about it's it's a decision um, an offset a decision so then you have also like five more armors in the medium tier so things like studded leather is now the first uh, medium tier armor and it actually comes into play at the same level as a regular leather armor but they have different strength requirements so if you want the leather armor you're going to be looking at something like 
Let's see here. Where am I at? Where is it? You're going to be looking at like 15 strength requirement for leather armor because it's a light armor. It's meant for something like a mage or an Amazon. And that's going to be a little bit of an investment. Uh, the sorcerer starts, I think, with 10 strength. And so the leather armor costs 15 strength. Uh, I might increase that to like 16 just to mess with people a, a little bit there uh, so that you need like one level plus a stat. So you might get like a piece of gear to get that. Uh, but you'll have to get some actual uh, strength to wear the leather armor. But it's a light armor, so it doesn't have a significant increase over the quilted armor. So all subject to change. The quilted armor has only 7 to 10 armor now, so that's reduced. Uh, it was 8 to 11 before. And the leather armor is now 12 to 16. Uh, and again, that might be changed. I don't know. But the point is, is that the quilted armor versus the leather armor, the quilted armor has no strength requirement in this mod, whereas in the leather armor does. And then you get the hard leather armor, uh, which is still uh, light tier, if you will. And um, the hard leather armor would have between 22 and 28 defense, and it would require 21 strength. So again, another level plus a little bit extra, so six points of strength in that situation. However, the heavier the armor, the higher their durability as well. Uh, and some of that is just kind of uh, random as well. So in the base game, a lot of these things, let's look at, let's look at the armors in here. Um, you have like a, I am very confused at what's going on. These are using the new durability. These weren't. So did I find these before? Oh, this one does. That one doesn't. This is from a previous run. So I don't need to reset it. It is actually working correctly. Um, so this is old. This is new. You can see that this has a durability of 12. So currently durability only reduces when you're hit, um, excuse me, not hit by a melee attack. So it, it ends up being... So like enemies right now only have a 25% a chance to hit me and I'm supposed to talk to somebody. Um, and so every time they miss a melee attack, they actually have to swing. It has to go through the formula. Every time they miss, they, uh, they trigger a 10% chance to lose durability. Um, 12 durability on this... Uh, this is actually a heavy armor. This is the first heavy armor right here, scale mail. It is available at level uh, 16 uh, for drop, uh, item level or quality level or whatever it is. Um, so this is actually a better armor. Um, the defense is probably wrong in here though. Like I, I haven't finished it. It's, and this defense, this is all the previous numbers. This is the new numbers. So this heavier armor should should probably be uh, correct. And, and the strength requirement on this is, is still technically incorrect. Uh, this should probably have a higher strength requirement than that. And because they drop it, uh, according to my spreadsheet, they drop at the same level uh, within the mod. But um, come back to Ormus here. So it's not just the armor and, and stuff like that. It's also the durability. So you can see the durability of this mask is equivalent to uh, so it's five, and that is the same as a leather hat. So you have a 10% chance when hit to lose durability. The headpiece is a weight of two. The chest piece is a weight of three. The belt is no longer a durability item. It is invulnerable. And uh, while well, this person doesn't sell shields, shields are also invulnerable as of uh, yesterday. So that may change. I just, one of the things I want to do is when you get hit or whatever the hit formula uh it, it includes shields and until i can figure some stuff out for shields i'd like to make shields only lose durability with things like smite and actual successful blocks uh if you have a high block chance you're not being yourself damaged so the resource cost of that would be the durability on the shield that is an extremely difficult um code edit at the moment for me so i'm not there yet and, and might have to actually create like a plugin 
uh, and, and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm not familiar with how to do that yet either. Uh, it's going to be some research at night kind of stuff. Uh, but the idea would be that shields are not considered one of your armor pieces when you're rolling for uh, defense. They would be considered an armor piece when rolling for block. And at that point, they would probably have a 10% chance, something pretty high, 10% chance to, to lose durability. And shields might have really high durability um, for that reason. I would like to standardize durability so I, I can probably end up changing some numbers around to make it so that durability on weapons is similar feeling as durability on, on, on armors. So the idea is that if you get in a pack of enemies and they're swinging and missing constantly, you're losing durability really quickly on something. Uh, the game has a way to two, three, and one, and one. And previously, well, I think it was a one on belt and a two on shields as well. Um, but because of that, this is now three out of seven. This is two out of seven. And if you're not wearing something, uh, that falls out of the pool. So this would be like three out of six or three out of five if I took my boots off. Or if they're broken, if they can no longer lose durability, uh, they're taken out of the pool as well. Um, which is a weird situation because that means if you have something that's indestructible, it actually makes your other items break sooner. Um, also probably something I would want to fix, but uh, that's way beyond my skill level at the moment uh, for, for some of that. But the idea is that everything that you're doing is always costing a resource. The game is meant to be, in my opinion, a strategic RPG where your decisions matter, your positioning matters, your skills matter, and your understanding the mechanics matter. So um, like this durability... If you bought it from a different character, because it's it's not changed, it's the old old numbers and they're maintained. So let's go to this person. We'll look at armors. You'll see that this has a durability of nine, and that has a durability of eleven, and that has a durability of thirteen, and yeah, you get the idea. And then like a leather cap or a mask is five. So while there are good defense light armors, they are also going to break very quickly if you get caught in a mob. And that is intentional. Um, I would like to make it so that it's a little bit different, but I'm not there yet. Um, but the idea would be that uh, projectiles could damage it. That projectiles don't damage your armor in this game, which is one of the reasons why mages and, and boazons and stuff like that, they're just so safe. They don't have to worry about weapon durability because they're using spells. And they don't have to worry about armor durability because projectiles don't count and melee hits. They're, if they're getting hit by melee, they're dying anyway. So um, definitely some, some changes in, in focus and design here. And, and these chain gloves and these light gauntlets should not be the same uh, defense. That's another thing. Um, defense will never be exactly the same between two items, um, between two types of items. Man, that's, that's a really good piece of gear right there. I am very heavily questioning buying that and wearing it. It'd be all my money though. Ten vitality is also really good. Anyway. What is even on this? Enhanced defense, maximum durability. Uh, but yeah, roles like this, like superior dur durability, um, they will be potentially more valuable. If you want uh, some some really uh, specific piece of gear, then they, they, they might be a little bit more valuable in that sense. So there you go. You can see that this has no durability. And, and no defense on it. It just has a 38% chance to block. Um, block speed is intended to eventually be massively buffed in the mod. Um, that is probably going to require some, some sneaky skill stuff or uh, uh, animation changes. Um, but the idea is that you'd be able to block faster and not get stuck in, in stun lock. Uh, Stunlock as an animation will still exist. It'll just be way shorter um, and stuff like that. So shields 
only give the chance to block and the whatever stats they roll. That's that's the idea. And then some of the heavier shields might quite literally give armor again, like the tower shields or some of the big paladin shields might give armor. Um, but it's it would be more of like a, a specialty. So like it'd be all gigantic shields and not just like just the Zacharum shield or just the tower shield or or something like that. Uh, but all defense is also being brought down. So you'll see that this is only 53. Um, that's 68, 48, this is like 14, 22. Um, it's, it's not a lot of being brought down. A lot of it's like 10, 15 percent. Um, but over the course of the game, you'll definitely hopefully feel it. And that's because the attack rating formula is so different because right now you'll notice that nothing can hit me. I'm still dying to the fire breath because it ignores this. Um, but nothing can hit me. Uh, and that's a problem in my mind. If something can't hit you, or if there is a system that allows you to basically avoid interaction with the game, there should be a resource that is related to it. Um, such as like iframes, Dark Souls, iframes. You just can't roll. You run out of stamina. Unless it's Dark Souls 3. You can, you can roll a lot in that game. But joking aside, the idea is that every action should have a sort of cost related to it. Um, why does that say one to two? That's weird. That's very weird. I don't know why that says one to two. It's not one to two damage. It's like one to... One one hundred damage. Maybe it's only displaying the um, damage per frame or something. Even still, that'd be like twenty-five to fifty damage per frame, which is like four times less ish. Anyways, so those are some of the things that I plan on changing. Um, I'll I'll leave it at that. I know I'm long-winded. Uh, I enjoy talking about this subject. I enjoy video game mechanics in general. And, uh, and I love Diablo 2. So there you have it. Uh, until next time, uh, see you after the break.